Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today is episode 8 of your NHL 22 franchise mode here with the Edmonton Oilers as we're walking into a pretty big episode today as we're heading into the 2022 free agency day as uh, we're going to go through that and then right after that we're going to get into some uh, in-game simulation as well and see how the new team looks which we're hoping to massively improve this team but there's some big question marks that we have lying ahead of us but before i get into that i'd like to just say if you are new to the channel make sure to slap that subscribe button and hit that like button as well that'll be very much appreciated boys so let's hop into this poppy here with the edmonton Oilers as we had a pretty crazy episode uh in the last one uh where we're, of course we've seen the buffalo sabers won the cup which was just i i don't even know how to explain it. it's just absolutely nutty that they won the cup but let's get right into everything here with the edmonton Oilers. now in the last episode we kind of tore down our defensive core and uh, there was a lot of big reasoning behind it because of the fact that we didn't have enough money to afford this defensive core that we right now have. Uh, of course, we have Sadine, Keith, Nurse and Bouchard, which will be most of our top four going into next year. Now, I'm not too excited about going with this top four. The reason why, I mean, Darnell Nurse, pretty well defensively. I mean, even though he shouldn't, he is a very good defensive guy uh, in this game, so... No, we already got one. We already got one good defenseman that is going to be our top two defenseman, basically, right? For right now. Then we got Duncan Keith, who I'm not really liking his defensive game. Now, offensively, Duncan Keith was an absolute beast. He was a big offensive guy for us. He really did a lot for us. But for one year left at $5.5 million, he's not really worth it. Sandine, he's all right defensively. And then you also got Bouchard, who is also just all right defensively. So we got a lot of big question marks with our defense core. And what we really do, you know, go forward with it. And I think we also play maybe Slater Cuckoo as a defenseman for our top six if we can't afford. Because we also do got to pick up some top six guys as well. Um, which our top six is pretty loaded uh, right now with um, David Dreisaitl, Nuge, Hyman, Pugliarvi, Yamamoto. And then Fogel, Spencer, and then Ryan basically. And then Benson, Perlini, and Cooper, Marodi. So we might have Marodi and maybe even, you know, we also have Ryan McLeod on the watch. And also Dylan Holloway on the watch as well. Basically, I think is all that we really need is a really strong right winger. We got Spencer, we got Ryan, we got McLeod. We got some guys that we could play up the wing. What we could use is like a maybe another two way guy to bring some more defense to the team, to bring some more stability uh, to the bottom six, uh, basically, is what we're looking for. Um, also, we're going to be also looking for a new head coach as well. That is something that we need to honestly look for because we fired our coach in the last episode uh, because of the fact that he was just absolutely garbage. Um, but it looks like, uh, yeah, we also need a new assistant coach as well. But I think that's the main thing that we focus on here right off the get-go is a new coach. Uh, Bergevin, <laughs> uh, 47 and 33. Who was he coaching for? The Tampa Bay Lightning there. 62%. He fits Darnell Nurse. He fits McDavid pretty well as well. And then we got uh, Malak who fits McDavid. Terrific, but not Hyman. We need someone that fits the entire team pretty well, basically. 66%, but he doesn't fit McDavid too great. Um, yeah, I think almost our best choice was Bergevin, right? Bergevin, 62%, fits McDavid pretty well, fits Dreisaitl. I mean, he's good, but for Hyman and Fogel, basically. I mean, he fits really well with McDavid and everything like that. And is the type of coach that we are looking for. We are honestly looking for a very offensive coach. And if we throw Hyman alongside of the right people, we wouldn't really have to worry about that. So let's do it. Malak, let's get you on a deal, buddy. We want you as the head coach of the Edmonton Oilers. Mark Malak will lock him up for the next five years. Just get him on the biggest contract that we could possibly give him. $4.5 million for the next five years hopefully we can get this big coach onto the team because we really do need a good coach that that is the big key to its success here with the Edmonton Oilers is that we need a good good, good coach and uh, hopefully uh, Malak could be that good coach for us so now for the depth wise of the Edmonton Oilers going forward for this year um of course right off the get-go we need a forward piece of depth uh, and we also need defense so I think we you know what let's focus on defense first let's pick up a right-handed defenseman that could play a lot of minutes I wish we could pick up Josh Manson because he's not that bad defensively. He could be a really strong defensive defenseman for us, but on, uh, unfortunately we cannot pick him up. But we need a right-handed defenseman that could play some big-time minutes. Marcus Nutavaro, I really like that. 
I really, really do mar like Marcus Nutavaro. If we just get him to a year deal, oh, perfect. Even a year deal. I, I, I thought we were going to have to spin the wheel there, but we don't have to. We could get him to a one-year deal at $2.5 million there for Nutavaro. Um, and then we need a depth guy for the third line as well. Um, so would Kelly Yankrook's way too expensive. Gusev, Chris Tierney, but we don't need a centerman. We more likely need a right winger. So get, you don't need a writer here. Um, not too bad defensively. Could be a big kind of depth goal scorer. And do we need that? Do we need another depth goal scorer for the team, right? How many snipers do we have? We only have really Pulley RV, and I was kind of talking about how we need another sniper. Neo Nino Ryder would be kind of that guy. I mean, he's big time payday. That's the problem with Neo. I mean, I would love to have him, but Rocco Grimaldi as well, but he's not very good defensively. So he kind of drops off from there on. We could just kind of maybe sign back Bobby Ryan back to another year deal. He wasn't too bad for us. 34 points. I mean, he might drop. That's That might be the case with him, though. Uh, we could go with Anthony Siu again, and he could play on the uh, right side there pretty well defensively. We could bring him back in for the team. Um, he was really good on the power play there for the uh, LA Kings. I think he might be one of our better options. 3.3 .3 million. You know, he's pretty decent defensively. He's really fast skater, so he'd be a really nice depth guy to make us more offensively gifted. So, you know, let's do it. Two years. Let's see what, because we do have to spin the wheel on him. So how bad will his contract be for Anthony to see you is the biggest question here. Because I don't want to overpay on him. That's the biggest thing. I don't want to, uh, no trade clause for Anthony to see you. Maybe. Matthias Yamark's pretty good too, but he's at 3.75, and he already has two people on him. Fabro is way too expensive. Is there any guys available for trade maybe that we could pick up for some extra depth here? Because I think that's the biggest thing is maybe some depth goal scoring could get us going a little bit, right? I mean, we, we have that option of maybe waiting to 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 do something like this to improve the depth to see how well our depth will improve um but i kind of want to take a look at the uh teams around the league see if there's any available options for us to go after i mean jeff skinner but i mean we would have to retain that contract by a crap ton just to even try to get him on the team tana nordstrom taves tyler johnson He's an option here, left winger, but he's not a sniper, though. That's kind of the problem. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm, I'm thinking maybe a big salary cap player that we could maybe get a retained on or something like that. Arvidsson, is he a depth? Oh, damn, he's second liner. I was like, man, we could get lucky with Arvidsson there. That would be beautiful, but nope. LA, Kyle Palmieri, is he a sniper? Two-way forward. Most of these guys will be two-way forwards because it's New York. Kevin Fiala there in New York. Van Reems that oh some good players here from uh Philly here. I skipped over Philly. Uh Atkinson's available, Lawton and JVR, which are all second liners. Scott Lawton would be really good if we were going after a defensive pickup here. I would almost honestly take him over Derek Ryan right now. Three million dollars for the next four years for Scott Lawton. Let's let's try to negotiate a deal here, right? So Derek Ryan, 35 years old. He was decent for us this year, but we can get rid of him if we're going to make this type of deal here for Scott Lawton. Now, do they have any depth guys that we could possibly could pick up for some offense? Limbo, what about you? Two-way forward. Ugh. Yeah, I was thinking maybe they would have somebody lucky to, that, they, that they were hiding, but if we were picking up Scott Lawton, that would be the only guy that we would be able to pick up, basically. But that would give us a really good third line C. I really would. And that's our best chance to go after someone here, right? I think we definitely do need to improve upon our defensive game. And Scott Lawton could fix that for us. Because he has some really good defensive analytics. Sure, he's not going to throw up a big amount of points. But he did throw up 45 points this past season. I mean, that's not terrible. Let's do it. Let's do this. Instead of... Uh, no, we need, we, need to, we need to keep Jason Spencer. Derek Ryan can go. And then we could add on, yeah, we'll have to add on a first round pick for this deal. 
and then see if we could get back like a third and maybe a fifth so what we're basically doing is we're picking up a guy that could be our third line centerman our dedicated for third line centerman and it'll actually be a pretty physical third line as well if you really think about it right we're gonna have warren vogel alongside of scott lawton and then we just need a right winger basically to fill in that spot so we're saving a little bit of money we're not gonna have a whole lot of money to pick up a nice depth player but we'll see if that goes through no it does not We'll just do the fifth and a six, maybe. Maybe, maybe we need to add a little bit more. Will that go through? No, just a six for Scott Lawton. Will that go through? Nope. Yeah, wow, it is way off the table. I thought we were near, but we're not. So we'll add a third round pick. See if we could get back a fifth here. Will that go through? No, we are not. Will that go through? There we go. And Scott Lawton is now part of the Edmonton owners, and we have four point three million dollars left. So, see you later, Derek Ryan. But now we actually have a dedicated third-line guy that could play on the PK. Could really be a big player for the Edmonton Oilers. And he's locked up on a really nice deal for the next four years. That was the biggest reason why I was appetized to Scott Lawton is because we need a third-line centerman. We do. I mean, unless Ryan McLeod develops to be that type of guy, but we at least have a cost-controlled player for the next four years and don't have to worry about locking him up. So, that is the biggest thing because we have four years until we have to re-sign Connor McDavid. So I want to try to keep this team as cat-friendly as we possibly can right now. We're not trading away Lavoie or Rodrigue. Malak, hey, there we go, baby. He signs up with the Edmonton Oilers. So we get the coach that we did want to get on the team. So that is absolute beautiful. Um, and that makes me really, really happy. So we got to fire some co uh, scouts as well and auto manage these guys so it looks like this video will definitely be a very very long video as we're we're definitely going to be making a lot of big deals here in this episode uh to kind of get this team ready for a big playoff run because that's the biggest thing we want to go for a playoff run this year that is our biggest biggest goal this year we really do want to go on a run uh hey so dana chara like that's the biggest thing like we went on a good run this past season with an all right defensive core and everything like that and uh, now we pick up scott lawton which yes was it a bit of an overpayment? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. We definitely could have maybe went after a third-line centerman and only had to pay nothing. But with getting Scott Lawton on the team, it guarantees us that we can go after somebody else and we don't have to worry about, you know, you know, if we have to pick up Rocco Gamaldi for a third-line goal scorer, which I'm fine with doing. Uh, I'm really fine with doing. So Marcus Nutavaro also sides with the Edmonton Oilers. So there we go. We get the right-handed defenseman that we were looking for in CC. He was <laughs> they were looking to dump back CC on my team. Hell no, bro. We're not taking CC back. So yeah, we're going to be looking for affordable players now. Uh, Rocco Gamaldi is still there as well. So that's a possible option. Uh, what about some other players? Is there any other goal scorers? So yeah, Grimaldi's there. What about otherwise? So we also have Bobby Ryan here as well. So we got Bobby Ryan and Grimaldi. Uh, and then Pontus Aberg as well, which is a former Oiler, but he's kind of worse defensively than Grimaldi. I think our best bet, let's go with uh, Grimaldi. Just for a year, get him on the team. Another speedy guy. Uh, we'll get him on the deal. Uh, a year or a year deal at $2.15 million for the next year for Rocco Grimaldi. We'll see how he does uh, down there that in that depth. And then if we could maybe pick up just a, uh, I guess another two-way. Yeah, we'll have to wait. We'll wait until we get Rocco Gamaldi onto the team, and then we'll see what else we can add. Franz Nielsen signs with the team. Hallelujah. So Dana Charles signs with the team. Hallelujah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Grimaldi signs with the Edmonton Oilers. Perfect. That is the way I like to see it. That is the way. There, okay, so we still have some money to sign <clears throat> a top six defenseman as well. So affordable again. Um, and we need a defenseman to play alongside a new Tavaro. So maybe Slater Cuckoo might be our best option. Is this going with new Tavaro? Because there's not a lot of beautiful defensemen to pick up here. Unless we go with this guy that's a high top six. That might actually not be a bad idea. Just sign this guy for, up for a year. It's a low-risk deal if he jumps up. If he doesn't, he doesn't, whatever it may be. It's just a kind of, you know, go for a pick. So, also, we do need to finish up the rest of the coaching staff as well. We need to sign a few more players on there as well to kind of fill up the rest. So, we need a good PK assistant coach because I definitely want to be really good on the PK this year, just how like how we were last year. Um, so, I think we'll find someone that's decently good on the PK. There we go. 
Actually, how we seen this guy that's actually good on a little bit on the power play as well. So perfect. Zadine Marchant. Welcome to the team, my man. And then just the AHL head coach we got to get. So we'll just sign some random journalist. And then maybe later on he could be our head coach later on. So get you signed on to the team. Actually, we'll go for this Ford Magnuson guy here. Get you logged up onto the team here. And then NHL assistant. And then we'll get on to the uh, start of the season because basically we really don't need to do anything. Uh, we got just going to let players develop. Hopefully Dylan Holloway is ready to jump into the lineup. Hopefully Bouchard and Sandine take some huge leaps because I, I don't like relying on young defensemen like that. I really don't want to, but that's the thing we're going to kind of have to right now. That's the, the biggest thing. And, of course, Marshawn didn't sign with me, but every other coach. What a dick. Of course, he makes me want to go back in the leggy ass menus to go back to the coaching staff and offer him even a bigger contract because he's being an ass. Legit, no one's offering you anything and you're complaining about market size. Shut up. Just sign the deal. What an ass. What an ass. Let's keep on going to the start of the season. I'm just going to take a drink of my Slurpee as well. Mm. There we go. So Wyatt signs with the team. Awesome. Exactly what I wanted to see. There you go. Marchant finally signs with the team. No, we're not making a deal to trade away our prospects, man. We're not doing any of that. Jesus. I don't know why people think I want to trade away Holloway and Bergolt and stuff like that. I'm not willing to right now. These are big prospects for our future. We got to keep at least a decent amount of these prospects because... I mean, with the way that we are right now, we're so tied up against the cap. We need to be smart with our picks, right? Exactly with Dmitry uh, Zdorov there, right? We made a deal where we traded away Tyson Berry, and we ended up actually building a pretty good defense score. Honestly, we picked up Rasmus Sandin last year for our first-round pick, and then we traded away Tyson Berry for our first-round pick and, and got a really good defensive player in Dmitry Zdorov there. So it's all about asset management right now and playing really smart with the players that we do have and if we can flip them then we can flip them right or exactly what we did with Derek Ryan we picked up a better defensively sound player uh oh my god fuck off with these trades man I'm not willing to do a trade I'm not trading away any of my players piss off seriously thought I cleared my block Jesus but we're just basically hoping to have a good playoff run this year. Last year was, you know, a good year up until we got swept by the Vegas Gold Knights, which was definitely not fun at all. So Connor McDavid still the captain, Dre Seidel, and then uh, Darnell Nurse is the A. Sure, that sounds good to me. We don't actually you know what we should have Nuge as the assistant captain. He's been here since like the start of the rebuild, even longer than Nurse. So instead of Nurse, I don't want Nurse as the assistant captain. I love the guy, but I think Nuge deserves it a bit better. Without a doubt. So, let's do the roster moves. Let's get everything organized. Hopefully, a lot of our prospects jumped up. Because, I mean, we do have some money to go sign some people. But I really want our prospects to jump up and play a big-time role for us this year. And Holloway is ready. He's at a 79 overall. I mean, Cloud's not exactly ready, which is okay. I think we'll play those guys in the minors. But I want Dylan Holloway up, I think, this year. And defensively, yeah, I think we play White uh, Kalak there. Uh, as our top six defenseman alongside New Tavaro. And then Bouchard did jump up. So, yeah, so all these guys are top four. So, good thing we didn't do any other moves for defensemen. Uh, Sandin did jump up, and he actually quite looked good defensively. Bouchard is, you know, we have Keith and Sandin, but we have New Tavaro who kind of backs up being a good defenseman as well. Uh, and then Soros and Smith are tandem going into this year again. So, I honestly am kind of liking the way that this team is looking right now. We have a really good shaping up team. Um, we're having maybe possibly Dylan Holloway jumping into the lineup this upcoming season. We'll give him a, a kind of a trial run, but uh, let's hit the best lines and let's edit these lineups, eh? So I want Dreisaitl to be there. I need Pulley RV up on my top line. Oh my god, we got a plus five from that. What about if we do that? Okay. And let's give, uh, yeah, let's do uh, Pulley RV alongside a dry saddle. And, and we'll try that alongside a dry saddle. We'll give that a try. 
Uh, and then Devin Shore, we're definitely not playing. He is not that good, so we'll figure out something here. But I think Warren Fogle, Scott Lawton, Rocky Gamoldi, we possibly do. Instead of Devin Shore, we do got Tyler Benson still. So instead of Brendan Perlini, we throw Tyler Benson up here. And then we also have Dylan Holloway, who could also play center. Right, if I'm correct on that. We definitely want Dylan Holloway. Yes, 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 yes. I was oh my god, Dylan Holloway is going to look beautiful up. Oh my god, Dylan Holloway is going to look beautiful up on those top lines. So, I think what we do with Dylan Holloway is I kind of like this fourth line here. I think this is going to be a very, very underrated fourth line between Holloway, Spensa, and Benson. I really, really like this uh, this fourth line. I think this is going to be killer. Um, our third line with Fogel, Lawton, and Rocky Gamoldi brings some speed, some goal scoring, and some defensive prowess with it. So I really like that. And our top six lines still look as powerful as ever. Defensively, we need Keith actually up here, sadly. Uh, we need to play Keith up in the top four. So we can do Sandine and Keith. We want Keith on his left side. And then instead of Cuckoo, we want Clack there. Is, uh, uh, I don't know. My tongue is tying up, but we want him there instead and then yeah so we get all pluses on the defense course so that looks really good the power play now is going to be the big one the big boy so dry saddle we were going to be putting him as the center dry saddle over there and then hyman taking the one t uh and then we want bouchard up on that top unit instead uh, he's going to be the top power play guy and then yamoto scott lawton to take the center sure poliari to take the one t instead of keith we can throw in. No, let's screw it. Let's let's throw in uh, Mr. Uh, Dylan Holloway. Let's give him a try there instead of uh, yeah. No, what Scott Lawton was pretty good offensively, so we'll give him a try. And then Holloway will play alongside a nurse there. Actually, instead of that, we could throw Holloway. And we'll do. We're basically giving a uh, Holloway a ten-game trial. If it doesn't work, then we throw Perlini alongside of him anyways. So that that's my plan with that. Oh, my webcam glitched. I'll be right back, boys. Sorry, boys. I'm back. My webcam glitched out there. But Holloway there. Uh, then we got McDavid, Nuge, Dreisaitl, Yash. Actually, yeah, that works. And then Poliarvi. Why is this one so bad? Poliarvi here. That does not fix it. Does... Well, it's because we had too many two-way guys around here. That's basically what it is. And then we get those Spensa. Hyman maybe not work in there. Okay, so that made it fixed. It's just Hyman doesn't work on the three on three here. Oh man, Bouchard gives it that plus five. Oh my lord, that's killer. Scott Lawton really does not work there. Our coach actually really, I mean, why is there so many minuses, man? It's so hard to like find that perfect fit with these lines, bro. Jesus. Spencer Yamona. We'll try we'll give that a try. And then our PK Lawton Hyman Sandine Nurse. Holloway. Um Yeah, no what that's that's good. I, I like that. I like that as an idea. And then uh yeah, I guess it's Wyatt Clack. Yeah, he's good defensively. I think we switch it up and we throw Sandine maybe alongside of Clack there. We do that. Just to give it more stability across the board. I think it's going to be the idea with that and then Nuge as our uh, third guy there. So there we go. The lines are all ready to go for the season and the Edmonton Oilers are looking ready to go to begin the season off. And I am certainly excited to get this season all started. But before we do, we need to get some depth onto the team. We need to kind of organize the rosters before we get the season all started out. We don't want to rush right into things. So uh, not affordable, just two-way guys. Just some two-way guys is all we need. Some depth two-way guys for the team, for the AHL, basically, to fill everything up. And then we'll get into the first game of the year. And that, and that will be basically it for today's episode. We'll get into the first game of the year. And then we'll simulate into the next episode up to trade deadline. And then, uh, you know, take a look at what we're going to be really doing next uh, with the Edmonton Oilers and everything like that. So, pretty busy episode, to say the least, here. As we made some big moves. We made a big deal going after Lawton. 
um, which I know it doesn't really fit the the coach that we do have right now with the offensive guy. We almost needed a generalist, but I'm hoping with the coach that we do have, it'll work out anyways. And the coach that we do have, I think, will be perfect for the team so far. So I'm hoping it does work out for us and that he'll be a good coach. But who knows? <laughs> Honestly, we're just going to kind of go with the flow basically right now and see how, you know, things move along. Uh, get uh, Jake Rathbone here as well. Why not? He's 23 years old. Might develop into something. But And then we'll get one more goalie. Why not? Get one more goalie to fill in the depth. Anton Forsberg, welcome along to the Edmonton Oilers. I think you were an Edmonton Oiler there for a bit, I'm pretty sure. But anyways, let's get to the first game of the season. It's actually, I want to get to the, the lineups here real right quick. But I'm hoping Holloway develops quite nicely being up on the main roster. I'm hoping he does quite well. We're going to be basically playing him out the first 10 games of the season. And then actually, that's what we'll do. We'll simulate the first like seven, eight games of the season. See how well D Dylan Holloway looks for the Edmonton Oilers. And then we'll kind of move from there basically is what the plan will be. If it looks good, then, you know, we'll, we'll give it a go. And uh, we'll, we'll keep Dylan Holloway in the lineup. But I think that's, so that's the first, second, third, fourth. Actually, let's do the Battle of Alberta. I really like that idea. Let's do the Battle of Alberta. Actually, I do need to edit the lines for the AHL as well before I forget. The menus seem... I think the, they updated the menus a little bit because these menus are a bit faster on the old gen from what it feels like. It's still definitely slow. It really is. It's definitely not very beautiful and crisp with the way that I want it to be, but, you know, it's not terrible. Where's my boy Ryan McLeod? Did they just take my Ryan McLeod right out of the lineup? Okay, no, he's still in. Oh, he's up at the top line. Nice. So hopefully he develops because, I mean, I, I think Ryan McLeod could be very useful. I don't know if he's going to be a big player this year, but maybe a call up if Dylan Holloway is not looking very good, possibly. Maybe. Because he's another great guy that we could use for a good defensive player for the future, right? That's kind of the biggest thing out of him. Let's do the Battle of Alberta. I want to jump right into that game. Uh, and I know Dylan Holloway, we are not giving him very many minutes to start off the season. And we could throw him up on the uh, third line alongside of Lawton and Grimaldi. Um, but I kind of want to leave the third line the way that it is. Unless Fogel starts, you know, struggling, then we'll make that change. Um, but I think right now, for right now, I think we'll keep it like the way that it is. So Vegas Gold Knights, we win 2 to nothing, And then we're going to be going up against the uh, Calgary Flames here. So I just want to check how well did Dylan Holloway do in this first game in the NHL. How well did he do? We only won by 2 nothing, so I'm not expecting any offense. 11, 11 minutes and 13 seconds. Got no points. Two shots. Did pretty well at the faceoff dot. A hit. Not too bad. Not terrible. So we'll see how well um, he does against... Uh, yeah, not, I hate that. Con I hate when we create players and the entry-level contract keeps going. It kind of sucks. I, I, I wish I could fix it. I, I don't know how to really fix the rookie contracts or not. Let me guys know because... I know with some players that just automatically keeps on going no matter what. Even if they are a rookie, just keeps on going. But whatever. Anyways, uh, we'll get into the game here against the Calgary Flames. The Battle of Alberta and Nuge. Oh my god, let's go. We're dominating. We're the goddamn kings of the Pacific Division. Let's go, baby. First period, one to nothing for the Edmonton Oilers. Second period, two to two. Tell it all the way. Let's go, baby. I'm a genius. I'm a genius. Power play goal by Dylan Holloway. Look at that man. Already putting up a big one for the Edmonton Oilers as the game is tied up at two. Another power play there for the Flames. We kill it off. I'm going to get in there with about 10 minutes left. And then we'll jump in there for the rest of the game. Oh my god. We're absolutely getting pelted with shots here tonight. We are getting absolutely pelted with shots here tonight. So let's jump into this game between the Edmonton Oilers and the Calgary Flames. Alrighty, so here we are, the Edmonton Oilers and the Calgary Flames, the Battle of Alberta, baby. Let's head into this one here is, uh, let's go, boys. So we get the top line out there, Sandine sends it over to Scott Lawton, who's out there right now, instead of the top line, so over to Yamamoto, nice shot there. Got blocked, hard on the attack. Oh my god, Yamamoto looking like a beast all over that puck. Why, why don't we have the, like, the full top line out there? That's weird. Weird, weird, weird. Oh my god, guys, let's go. Get it out. Get that second line out there. 
It's got a lot to be pushed up against the boards. Slow as Keith picks it up now, carrying it up, sends it over to Leon Dry Saddle. Let's go here, boys. Gets it over to Keith, over to Pulley Yarby. Come on, my man. The pool party, baby. Get a big one for me, big boy. As he gets taken in the corner and he loses the pot call, that was almost a rebound there for us, too. That was a good chance. Dylan Dubay. Nice hit there, Nurse. Good job, bud. Good step up. Pulley Yarby over to Sandine. Over to Nuge. Ryan Nuge Popkins carrying it up through the neutral zone, looking to send it in. defense oh that was actually keith who stepped up there nurse hard after the puck buddy oh my god oh what a step up there by uh what was that sandine pull your RV sends that one in deep yeah i like that idea get that first sign out there spin a jad carrying it up in the neutral zone here let's get on the the full four. Oh my god good chance big save by sorrows oh my god what a He's standing tall there for the Edmonton Oilers. Oh, and that's a huge hit. Jesus, got absolutely nailed there. My lord. Or for Hannafin, big save by... Oh my god, huge save once again. McDavid over to Sandine. Sandine sends that over to Hyman. He gets through. Come on, buddy. Go hard after the puck. Hard after it, baby. Big hit there on Spinach. Uh, what a hit. Is Backlund. Nice chance. Big save there by... Uh, I think that's... Is that Smith in the net? I think that was Soros. I guess we'll see here in a little bit once they get another shot off. Oh, my God, Nurse Bouchard. Take that into the corner, buddy. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Go, McDavid. Go, boys. Go, boys. Go. Yeah, Yamo. Oh, what a chance. What a save. Deneau battling up alongside of the boards with Yamoto there. Picking apart at Deneau, trying to get it loose, but not able to as Nielsen. Carrying it up for the Calgary Flames. Come on, boys. Cut him off. Hard on Nielsen. Hard on Nielsen. As Nurse, he picks it up. Carrying it through the neutral zone. Looking to chip it up. 13. Oh, man. Are we going to go to overtime here? Nurse. Oh! Oh, my God. What a chance. I guess we're going to be heading off to an overtime here. What a back and forth period here. No one was able to really get anything mustered. But we're going to be heading off right to the uh, overtime. Which I don't mind at all. I don't mind at all. Let's head over to overtime. Shit, why do I have my third pair defense? Who's that? Is that Kalak? Number 69? New Tavaro, oh god. I didn't mean to have him out there. Oh, dry saddle! Go for a quick line change, go! Get a new guy out there, get Nurse. I want him out there for this 3-on-3 uh, three -three action. Over to Anderson. Oh my god, we're too close together. Yeah, fucking A. Fucking A. Matthew Kachuk, what a snipe. Jesus, he absolutely killed us, but... Anyways, well, that was a rough loss there for the Edmonton Oilers. But, hey, Dylan Holloway got a goal, and he is looking quite well for only getting, yeah, six minutes and 50 minutes of ice time, and he got a goal out of that. So uh, that's really impressive, and that's absolutely awesome to see. But for right now, guys, I think I'm going to end the video here. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in, guys, and I will see you guys all in the next episode where we take on the 2022-23 season as we look to dominate and take a division uh, title maybe. But for right now, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Adios, amigos.